So I get a lot of questions um, being a Syracuser for more than 15 years about this fast mill system that we've started using. So this is a Glidewell product. It's called the Glidewell Fast Mill IO. This is in office. Um, the material that I mostly use is Bruxer. It's actually the only thing I've milled. And Bruxer now, the NOW stands for no oven weight. Um, it's pretty awesome. So let me explain my workflow. Um, so first and foremost, we scan with an Itero now. We don't use a separate scanner like a Cerex scanner or a Prime scan or whatever. I use an Itero scanner, which I love. It's the newest, the 5D. Once you scan, you set it up as, um, there's a lab that's added to your lab list in the Itero so that it goes directly to this computer. So the upload goes up to the sky um, separately, but it also goes directly to this computer. So within a few minutes, and it usually takes less than a minute, um, the uh, software will directly show us that we have a new case. So this is obviously a model, right? And then we'll go through and we'll design it. Um, it gives you a proposal on the margins, just like uh, some of the new software with Sarek, if I recall right, does. You can move everything around. I mean, we can click and drag the margin. It also gives you a little height, you know, uh, indication. We have a whole bunch of different options, you know, depending on what you want to do. Um, of course, this is a monochromatic model because it was based on a printed, printed model. Anyway, so once it's designed, uh, which is very, very simple, um, here it's going to give us a design. Really, there, there's only one step that I need to do. It's going to give me a warning because it doesn't like where the margin is. Again, this is a, a model. And there's really one step that I need to do. There are some parameters that are set up early in the software, you know, up here under tools that I can adjust. Um, but what we're going to do is check the contact. So I'm going to edit the mesial spot. You can see this is the contact that initially proposed. So I'm just going to change the size of that and location if I wanted to. Hit the check mark. And then I'm going to go to edit distal spot. Same thing. And, you know, you can manipulate this around so you can determine where you want it. Hit the check mark, and then I'm going to hit fix contacts. And it's going to go through its algorithm and calculate. Um, and so here's what it's proposing for me 20 microns of positive pressure. And you can actually see where those contact points are. There's 20 microns there. And then my occlusal offset that we're used to with CEREC occlusal offset, I have it designed at negative 500 microns, so half a millimeter short. But I can change that if I wanted to. I could go up here and change all these design settings for all the materials, just like you can with CEREC. Anyway, once that's done, we take this guy, we send it to milling. It's going to warn that there's an undercut, and just like with CEREC, um, sometimes the undercuts are a big deal, sometimes they're not at all. Um, it goes straight to the milling machine, right? So the milling machine is obviously right here. Um, it, this milling machine is very, very simple. It uh, has one burr here and then the block is inserted there. So there's one confirming choice here. We're gonna confirm that guy. And I'm sorry, I'm holding this camera with one hand and talking with the other. So if I go to view cases, um, I'm not gonna show you this because it'll pull up a bunch of other patient data and there's HIPAA issues there, so I'm not gonna pull that up. Um, but essentially, if you go to view cases here, it'll give you a list of all the patients. So this is the design side of the, of the mill. If I wanted to mill this, I go to the mill design. I'm sorry, the, the mill software. So I'm, again, same thing there, there are a bunch of patient information. So I'm gonna turn over to the mill and I'm gonna click. Um, and what's, what I'm seeing now, and I'm not gonna show you because it's got patient data on it, um, is there is a test. Maybe if I drag this down, I'll drag this down so it only shows the test. Okay, so now you can see the information that I get right here, right? So here's the tool life, 0% because we use a new tool for every um, instrument. I'm sorry, every crown. And the coolant life. And just like with CEREC and other milling machines, there's a coolant reservoir in here. And this uses its own specific coolant. It's Glidewell coolant. It's very, very simple to fill up. And you have to clean it out. You know, Zirconia makes a lot of powder and it tells you when it's done. Um, but what, I, what I'll do first is I'll hit mill. So the first thing it's going to do is set up, and you'll notice the little spindle is going to position itself, and then it's waiting for me to put the block in. Now, just for fun, I'm going to actually load a block. We're not going to get the mill process all the way done, but here's a D2 block. You can see it has a little mandrel. I'm trying to get that to focus. There's a notch on the bottom and a hole on the top. So that goes in with the hole up, and then we have a torque-specific wrench. 
we're going to get that torqued down. And just like with your Sarek and many other machines, it will actually click for you when you get to the torque right there. Um, I've mounted a little magnet up here so it stays. Um, then this is ready to go, except I have to change the burr. So we're going to go back over here and click OK. And what it's going to do is it's going to position that back and it's going to open this little latch for the burr. And then I'm going to take one of these brand new burrs, if I can get it with one hand. I'm going to take this burr and I'm going to put it in the machine. So you'll see this is now open. It just slides right out. That burr, you can see it's got some little burn spots or dark spots on the bottom. It's going to go in the trash. The new burr is going to go in, if I can get it in there. And then I'm going to close this. And I'm going to hit OK now that it's loaded. And what it'll do is it'll lock that mandrel down. This is all zirconia dust, of course. And then it's going to go through uh, some measurement steps, just like you see with your other milling machines with different um, processes. And you can see that the tool life is now at 100%. Um, it's measuring the length of the tool. It's going to go through a water cycle and confirm that we have enough coolant flow. Everything's turning on. Pretty exciting. It's going to go through and measure just like many other machines do. Here's your water flow. Now, you really can't see much of the milling at all because of all the water. There's so much water because, as you know, zirconia gets really hot. So here it's going to mill for us. I'm going to stop it here so we can save that block in just a second. But here's the calculation it gives us. So there's test. There's the, the one we're milling. You can see the shade. I did not change the shade. That's a D2, obviously. Tooth number three is a full crown. Percent complete, it's at zero because it hasn't milled enough. There's too much variability there, so it hasn't um, given me a calculation. But it's actually going to go through and start moving. I might let it mill just for fun so I can have a sample. I'll probably stop it almost all the way. But this is, uh, this is what it does. And as it starts to go, I'll give you uh, some, some of my thoughts. There it's measuring, it's confirming the hardness of the material length of fur. And now it's really going to start. Look at all that water flow. So a couple of thoughts. You know, I've, I've gotten some pushback from docs that I used to work with um, that are diehard Sarek users. And I'm not downplaying Sarek in any way, shape, or form. Personally, I really like the Sarek system. Um, I like it a lot. And I used it for many, 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 many years. And I think as we, uh, you know, as we experiment with these new processes and procedures and devices and setups, we'll get to the point where we can feel real comfortable using a variety of things. I found the Glidewell Fast Mill has worked really well for me in my office. Um, the setting itself um, lends itself, this office lends itself to a, you know, single posterior crowns. Um, the one drawback is it's a 30 to 45 minute milling cycle. And there's a lot of noise as you can hear. But in the end, if you were to calculate, you know, milling out an Emax crown and then firing it for 15 or 20 minutes with the cooling, it's equivalent time. So why not get a final restoration without having to fire it for a much more cost effective um, investment? Anyway, hopefully that's been helpful. You know, I personally, I really enjoy this software. My assistants love it. It's exciting. It's fun. And I, uh, I think more of it should be, should be given it a try. So, thanks for watching.